Property, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be starting a brand new game with The Witcher 3. So, special thanks to Black Falcon and Sammy for sponsoring this campaign. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to sponsor a game yourself, just email me at thestrategyprofessor at gmail.com. Let me know what you have in mind. Um, you know, we can negotiate, but usually I'm looking for about four to five dollars an hour, and I'll play almost any single player game that you want me to play. It has to include the cost of the game as well. Um, I already did own The Witcher 3 and the two DLCs. I played it back um, last winter when the series was coming out on Netflix. Really good first season, by the way. Very good game as well. A lot of people consider Witcher 3 to be one of the best games of the last decade or so. Um, and if you do want to fund something, but it's a little bit much, so if it's going to be like 30 hours, you know, $5 an hour, that'd be 150 And then if the game's like 40 bucks, that's 190 I know that's really hard for a lot of people to afford. But if you want to email me, let me know. I can uh, pitch it to people on the stream and other videos. Um, and we can just see if we can crowdfund some of that as well. So if a bunch of people want to chip in like $10 towards something, I can keep track of who wants to chip in. And then when we get to the goal, I can just email everyone, confirm, and then just have everyone donate and do it that way. So anyways, just let me know if you're interested in something and we can set it up. I do tons of other content on the channel as well. If you're new to the channel, I do League of Legends streams every night starting around midnight. Go till about 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Currently a Diamond Force support. We do tons and tons of Total War Warhammer as well. We have over 30 campaigns on the channel with that. We're always adding new stuff, so be sure to check out the rest of the stuff on the channel as well. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get in here. Um, so a couple of disclaimers real quick. I have not beaten this game before. I did play probably about 100 hours on it. I think I was maybe halfway through it or so. Um, so I am familiar with the beginning part, um, but I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to be able to min-max everything fully. I am going to play it on the hardest difficulty, uh, Death March, and we are going to play with the um, dynamic scaling or whatever it is that levels up all the monsters as you level up as well. Um, so just keep that in mind. And also, if you've watched other stuff on the channel or if you're not familiar with Witcher, this game does have a lot of graphic violence in it, and there is some nudity in it. So if that bothers you, you know, I'll let you know when it's coming up. If I remember it, it should be pretty obvious, and you can just fast forward or avert your eyes. It's on par with something like Game of Thrones in terms of the um, level of violence and nudity in it. And it's just like the TV show, um, just like Game of Thrones. So I think it's done in good taste. I don't think it's that gratuitous kind of make it gratuitous there are some brothels if you want to you know partake in that we're not going to partake in that in this campaign but you know kind of the plot driven nudity from time to time i think is pretty pretty classy pretty tasteful in my mind but just keep in mind it is intended for um adult audiences so just throwing that out there um because the other games that i play are, are not like that typically so just keep that in mind but okay let's go ahead and get in here oh crap I with my dear friend Geralt of Rivia. See, well, this is what it looks like when you're continuing a save Yennefer. that I practice here. Um, years, but now just a and as we sit through this for a second, it just takes a second, so I'm not going to edit it out. We'll just, we'll just jump back out. Um, this is not going to be a spoiler, so like very early on in the game. Um, but yeah, let's we'll jump back out. I forgot we're starting a new one. I did record a little bit of this yesterday. I was starting to record a couple of episodes, and I... Um, didn't realize that the recording kind of looked bad, like the graphics are all choppy and stuff. Because it looked really good for me, but um, it was really choppy. So I had to go through and, you know, really like crank up the OBS settings to try to give you a decent quality here. Um, so, okay, so we're doing Death March. We're going to do show tutorials off and then simulate a Witcher 2 save on. So you get to make some decisions that'll influence this game based on what you think would have happened, what the decisions you would have made in the previous game. So I researched those <laughs> before I played. Anyways, we'll watch the cutscenes, and I'll explain a lot about the lore, what I know, and just the game itself, and give you my input as we go through. Okay, then I'll let you watch the cutscene here really quick. Just take a couple of minutes. I'm going to refill my drink as we're going. And I'll be right back.
is Yennefer. We'll see her again here in a second. Main character, and that's you, Geralt. The one on the right there. That was a cutscene, obviously. This is the in game engine. And that's you in the dream. <clears throat> so I'm dreaming there. to amuse but to prod you to hurry it's midday already you promised Siri you'd train with her go before Vesemir bores her to death with those etchings so later then hmm see you later They just want to set the tone right away. Hey, there's going to be some nudity in this game. There's really not that much, honestly. It's like less than 1% of the game. Okay. So Care Morin, and I'll explain some of this stuff. I'm not an expert on the lore, but there are two previous games, and there are six books. That, I think it's six books, six or seven books. It's based on by um, I think it's Andrei Sapotsky. Sapotsky. Um, yeah, so you can kind of pan around, check it out. I mean, this is 2015. These are some pretty good graphics um, for 2015. 
but um so obviously they have a very long history together um Yennefer and Geralt they're both very old actually they're both about a hundred years old or so but they're both touched by magic in different ways witchers which is what he is they're of kind of abducted very young and they're given all these poisons and this kind of almost like assassin like training and a bunch of them die doing it but the ones that survive um, have some superhuman capabilities very strong very fast they have limited sort of magical capabilities good healing very good with alchemy and potions so very very strong uh, they are looked down upon by a lot of humans who are afraid of them um, but they do tasks for humans they interact in different ways um, so usually it's just monster killing sometimes they get involved in political affairs but usually humans will just um, hire them to go kill different monsters that are causing their towns trouble and things like that and then she is a sorceress so they have a lot more magic and they do that through um, a rigorous training process it shows this pretty well in the show early on in the season um, and they have lots of magical powers including keeping themselves youthful for longer periods of time and it's complex but they're very strong beings as well that are usually met with some trepidation by normal humans but they are humans who just undergo some strong training as well see i thought siri could stand to wait a little longer it's uninstructive not to mention unreasonable I missed you. A lot. And I missed you. But we'll have plenty of time to make up for that. Go and train with her. Then come back. It'll give me a chance to put my face on. Of all the women I've known, you're the only one who does that before. You've known many. What's it matter? Only ever thought of you. Um... So yeah, they have a very, very long and storied history together. Makeups and breakups, and they've had lots of near-death experiences, mutual friends, mutual enemies. They just have a very, very rigorous history together. You can turn on your Witcher senses. I have it on the tilde key, um, and just check some stuff out. You're running out of juice. I know. You might bring me some more once you're done training. So when you're looking for something, it will um, it'll sparkle like that over there, or you will see things in red that you can interact with. So it's kind of cool. Like this over here, we can probably interact with it. Nothing but silver. Gold clashes with my complexion. You should know that. But there are other love interests that you can take. So that's kind of the classic one that they've been involved a lot. The will they won't they thing in the previous two games i know in game two triss who is another character we'll run into eventually in the game was a love interest of Geralt. triss marigold um and there are others that you can run into too so you kind of get to choose how you want the romance to unfold and based on your choices you know the women will interact with you in different ways so it's pretty cool a lot of your choices really do matter in this game as far as the plot's concerned. You know, th there are major plot points Old witchers fast where there's only a few different options, but there are tons and tons of smaller of ones that influence um, different dialogues and some, um, some major outcomes as the game unfolds. So yeah, Yennefer... Um, very powerful sorceress. Very uh, political. Guess she prefers practice to theory. And mm. this is Siri down here. The background on her. She's an orphan girl. Time to wake up, master. Um, These lessons so boring they put you to sleep too. Damn it. May or may not have drowned on a ship. Ghouls and well, spoil the ship. Won't any plot points or whatever, eyes. but um, <laughs> making her slog through that brick. No wonder she's she took off. Mysterious John and extremely Bruce powerful. Lacks flair, true, but he's reliable. Not like the hogwash they print nowadays. She has elder blood. She's tackling the pendulum. Right? She's kind of the focal point of this game. I'm trying to figure How out what's going on with Sorella. Don't she's in train season one. alone. It only embeds your errors. Bring our young damsel to the lower Double courtyard. Team. She wants to practice. She'll get to practice. 
This guy I'm talking to is one of Geralt's old friends, Vesemir. Don't get mad at her. Witcher. Everyone the hell here. Not? The whippersnapper refuses Most people to do as she's told. Place, this is like the whole like that about Witcher, her. This is like the Witcher. Fine. I suppose I'm partly um, to blame. But this has to end. I guess one of them. now. Where a bunch of them go. There are not a lot of monsters them. is not something to be taken lightly. Siri must understand that if she's to become one of us. I'll see you below. So they're training her to become that. I think they know this. This is in the past. Pretty far in the past. And she's still a little girl. In the main game, she's I think supposed to be in her twenties or so. Now I see why you were so eager to practice. Strike. That's actually one of the really confusing things in season one is they jumped around in time a lot, but because Geralt and Yennefer and some of the other major characters don't really appear to age very much, um, it was hard to tell where they were in the circus timeline. Pirouette. Wrong. Footwork. So yeah, this is like probably enough. Get down. I don't know, ten or fifteen years ago from when he's With asleep. Flip? What do you think? And he looks basically the same. So best All right, take off the blindfold. You've got work to do. Your reflexes are still slow. Maybe for a witcher. Think drowners or striggers will go easy on you because you haven't undergone the mutations? Though in your shoes, I'd fear Vesemir more than any Striga. Disobeying his instructions? Unwise. Well, yes, but that book was horribly dull. I know, and you know that's no excuse. <clears throat> <sighs> I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Better not. Vesemir said if it does, he'll make you eat a bowl of slugs covered in salt. <laughs> Exactly. So you'd best behave. Come on. We'll practice with the others down below. Shall we run the walls? <clears throat> Not this time. Believe me, you don't want to keep Vesemir waiting. So he wears the little, um, they wear an amulet from their school. There are different witcher schools that specialize in different things. He's from the wolf school. So he wears that little silver wolf pendant and it starts shimmering. Um, when he's near something that is supernatural. So they're kind of like monster hunters. Anything to say for yourself, young lady? I'm very sorry, Uncle Vesemir. Young blood craves action, I understand that. But when you fight a beast, knowledge counts as much as your silver sword. At the very least, you ought to be so able to tell a ghoul from an owl ghoul. By markings. Like unto the Panthera Tigris that in Zeracania dwells, and by the sickly paleness of its visage. Mm. So you did read the chapter. Still, you should have asked if. But you were asleep, Uncle Vesemir. <laughs> so you did the reading. Why not admit it right off? Never pounce on an advantage as soon as it appears. Wait till it stands to have maximum effect. Uncle Vesemir's words. Well, you're a quick study. Quick, but mischievous. Fine, we've talked enough. Geralt, you're with me, Lambert with Eskel, Siri with a dummy. <sighs> Again? Stop groaning and grab a sword. So they carry what two swords. Think? Should we start by reviewing the fundamentals or go right to free training? I'll explain it during this next little moment here. Obviously, a lot of cutscenes and stuff at the very beginning. It does pick up a lot with action. Um, so I'm going to skip the tutorial. You can Let's do skip straight to free training. To. I'll explain no the combat point going when we get the in basics again. But they carry two swords. One is iron, and that's for fighting humanoids, and then silver is for fighting monsters. The, the, the silver does a lot of extra damage and can just a lot better for killing monsters in the game than iron. So they don't do it just to look cool. It's just so they're ready for anything. As soon as she's back, we'll set her to polishing all the swords at Kaer Morhen. 
Find that helmet. Siri? Uh, I'll make sure to find every last blade for you. So that was the wild hunt they're kind of like this supernatural interdimensional evil i don't remember all the mythology behind them but they're hunting and trying to get siri and like leverage her power to basically terrorize and increase their own power and influence so they're just kind of like the this incarnation of evil you all right <laughs> had a nightmare about? Take forever to explain. I think they were alerted to Ciri's presence early time. on through a special event that's shown in season one of um, Witcher. There's like this really like big moment, or maybe it wasn't Ciri. I think it was Ciri's mother, where she screams a lot and causes this huge like disturbance. I think it catches their eye and draws them over here to try to find the source of that power. <clears throat> Started in the guest room at Kaer Morin. I was relaxing in a tub and next to me... Tris? Yennefer. Funny, isn't it? She's never been there. Seemed so real in my dream, though. Was she nagging you about something? <laughs> <laughs> True to life, indeed. The characters are great in this. It's, it's just, it's a really awesome game. Awesome. We'll find her. In the dream, I went and found Ciri. And then we trained. Those were the days. Hmm? Little she-devil. I've trained kids who were faster, stronger, but none had her character. Didn't end well, did it? They Your have those dream. cat eyes because of their mutations. No. A wild hunt appeared, attacked Ciri. I couldn't move, stood there like a stump. It was just a dream. That's the problem. It was more. In the past, when Siri would appear in my dreams, something was wrong. She was in danger. We taught her how to defend herself from anything, wraiths included. So the yellow one, if you're playing through, means like that's how you progress on the main sort of dialogue line. But you can take those side paths. Sometimes the side paths open up additional yellow ones, though. So be downing soon. Time to go. Wait. Show me the letter from Yennefer. Might have overlooked some hint in there. Didn't overlook anything. We were meant to meet in Willoughby. That's what she wrote. Meanwhile, one army or another burned the village to the ground. All we can do is follow her trail, so... Stop talking for a minute and give me the letter. Oh, how about that? It does smell of lilac and gooseberries. You were gonna read it, not sniff it. We must meet... soon. Willoughby near Vizima. Hmm. Nothing else to guide us there. What's this postscript? I still have the unicorn? That's private. Very private. Aha. I understand. At least I think I do. Maybe not entirely, but 
Perhaps that's for the best. Back on topic. <laughs> How's it look? How far behind Yennefer are we? Two or three days. Trail's fresh. But it looks like it leads towards the main road. Could be muddled there. Uh-oh, finally time for some Hear action. That? I hear it. I smell it. Ghouls. This opening fight's actually a lot harder than it seems. Necrophage is followed. Let's go before any more show up. Okay, so I can't do the combat stuff without actually being in combat, but I'll explain a couple of a couple of concepts for you here. Um, so you do have some limited uh, signs that you can do. So you have these magical signs here. You have five different ones. Um, they have different abilities. So it's basically like a spell that's on a limited cooldown. You don't have any mana, but, like, you can't run out of mana that doesn't regenerate. It's like energy, if you want to think about it like that. Um, so the one that I was using is Quinn, which is what I use most of the time. And I might butcher some of these names. Sorry if I do. Um, but uh, this is a Polish. It's a Polish-based game based on Polish folklore, I think. Um, so Quinn basically gives you a shield that protects you from a certain percentage of damage. Um, it's still, I've told it no tutorial. It's still giving me the tutorial. So yeah, I have that 100% shield up there. Um, then you can do Ard, which basically knocks a lot of stuff back. You can knock out walls. It'll knock down humanoid targets sometimes, or at least stun them a little bit. Um, you have Igni, which throws like fire. You can catch stuff on fire. Good little AoE ability. You have this. Um, Yarden, I guess, which is good against Wraiths. If Wraiths walk into this, then you can't hurt them. Otherwise, you can't hurt them. Ghost-like things. And then um, Axie will make humanoid type of things um, fall asleep for a little bit of time or like be stunned temporarily. So those are kind of your main things um, that you can do. And you see that bar, that little yellow bar near the red bar upper left. Whenever you use one of these then it goes all the way down and if you're in combat it fills up a lot slower that's also your stamina bar so like rolling around in combat you don't regenerate stamina while you're rolling and so it really slows down your rolling a lot but if you notice i was trying to like hop around a lot sort of dash from side to side you still regenerate stamina while you're dashing so if you can dash instead of roll it's not as safe but it's faster, so you can respond and attack faster, and you fill up your energy bar, which means you get more shields, more fire, more whatever you want to do. So I could have used fire there as well, but especially on Death March, which is the highest difficulty that we're running on, um, I use the shield a lot of times, unless there's a really special reason to use something else. 
So we want difficulty death march. We want the Gwent level to be high. We are going to be playing the card game Gwent. We'll go into that at the start of next episode, probably. Um, when we get to the town. And then... Automatic finishers. On-screen tutorials. Okay, we take that off. Um, enemy upscaling on. So this means that if... As you level up, weaker enemies level up too. So that even some of the starting zones... Um, you can't out-level areas. Now, it doesn't mean they scale down, so you can't go to the very, like, most elite place in the game as level 1, and they're all going to be level 1. They don't always match you. They can still be higher than you, so they still have a default, but if you level up and you're fighting something that would be lower, now it's the same level, so that you always kind of have a threat. And I like this a lot because certain zones, um, especially Velen, which we'll go to in a little bit, there's so many quests and so many things you can do that when you get done with like half of the quests in a zone, you've already out leveled the zone and then everything else is just a breeze and you kind of miss out on some cool opportunities and some cool fights because you're a completionist and you're trying to do everything. At least that happened to me a lot. So this keeps a lot of those quests relevant, um, at least the monsters in the quests relevant. Now you don't get a ton of extra XP for doing that. Like your XP will still diminish, but at least the fights will be relatively equal. So. I'm going to try out enemy ups upscaling. I didn't do that in my first run. Um, and I'm not going to be getting every single secret in the game. I'll get um, a decent chunk, but I'm not going to pick like every plant and, you know, all of that stuff. We're going to do all the monster hunts. We're going to do all the secondary quests, the every main quests. We're going to play Gwent. Knew, We're going to try to get all the cards. Stop talking about how useful um, they are as creatures. Because you can brew potions But there's going to be blood. some, like, random <laughs> no, things we're just not going to have. Because by eating rotting corpses, they prevent epidemics. Hmm. They didn't okay. know they eat the living. So we do well. have a map here. So you can check out, so you can scale out. So it's not like fully open world without any um, no borders whatsoever. But you do go to space. Like there are certain zones, and some get added later as well. But you can go to these towns. It'll tell you like their suggested level, kind of these fast track regions. But when, and there's uh, Kara Morin where we were originally. Um, but you. Uh, the, the places are huge, like really, really massive. A lot of them are. Um, Velen is really big. Novigrad's big. Skellig is big. So um, you still have lots and lots no, of room to run around. Really upsetting too. And this fast travel here collapsed. allows you to go to other fast travel hey, places. Yeah. So we are right now. We're in the middle of a huge war between basically the south um, and the north. So you have kind of the Northern Alliance war against. War not um, exactly going our way. We have a side. The Northern Realms. Radovid's realms, don't yeah, you mean? So you start off. Tamaria and Edirne are no more. Well, Radovid's you'll see the politics to restore the old borders as soon as he wins the war. But the Nilf Guardians are the Southerners. Gotta believe something. It's what keeps us going. We'll come back to this town. There's some quests there, what we just ran through. <laughs> Not so fast. So you basically Astrum. have the Nilf Guardians who are kind of like a um, imperial sort of power. Are we going? trying to take over a bunch of stuff from the south, going up north, trying to Help annex me. it. And then you have the Northern Alliance, which are um, a little bit rougher around the edge, you know, kind of more country type of stuff that's defending against the Nilfgaardian invasion. And there are all sorts of minor factions and Stabbing and two facing. It's just a really cool game because it's so complex. If you like, I know it gets compared to Game of Thrones, and people that are real fans of it probably won't probably won't like that. Um, but it, it kind of is. If you like Game of Thrones, you really will like this, especially the earlier seasons before it kind of got bad in the last couple of seasons on the show, at least. Um, in the sense that the con, it, like your decisions have real consequences. You know, like. Sometimes yeah. there's not Come a out. good decision, there's just a less bad decision. <laughs> and you have to be careful. I mean, it God, is a brutal, cold close. world, so sometimes you I gotta make sure some hard choices. I was sure I'd end up like my you know? mare. Provided you got lucky. Your horse died quickly, but griffins like to toy with their prey. Eat it, alive, piece by piece. Oh. You'd... You'd like a reward, I suppose. I'm gonna let this dude go. You don't owe us anything. You are in need. 
We helped. And they call witches heartless. Say they won't lift a finger without pay. They also say mice are born of rotting straw. Back to the trail. Like I said, leads to the main road and ends there, muddled. You seek someone? Yes, a woman. Medium height, long black hair. Seen anyone like that? No. But there's an inn here in White Orchard. Soul one around gets its share of travelers. Perhaps you'll learn something there? Besides, the inn keeps my cousin. Tell her Bram sent you. She'll treat you like family. Not a bad idea. Especially since that wound needs cleaning. Ah, beast barely grazed me. But sure, could use a good rye. Nice and cool, you know, straight from a cellar. Let's go. I wonder if there's anything... I don't think there's anything around here of note. Hey ya. But yeah, I mean... Well, you'll see how I'll play it out. I usually try so, to be... a griffin this close to the village? Strange. My thoughts Relatively exactly. good. In the forest to the mountain, sure, but here? Near the main road. Maybe it's the war. Corpses everywhere, the stench of blood, burnt flesh. Kind of a... Perhaps I don't know exactly the... Men, too. We need to watch ourselves D &D in designations, but maybe and chaotic good. As soon as we learn. Kind of thing. There's a duck in there. What? Take that down before there's trouble. That is a coat of arms, the Temerian lilies. They've a right to hang there. This ain't Temeria no more, old man. It's Nilfgaard now. My arse it is. I'll not drink with Weaver Lost Freaks. Beg your pardon for those thugs. No need. We're used to it. Folk are jumpy around here. Armies just passed through. Now a griffin's prowling about. Mm-hmm. Already had the pleasure. Ran into your kinsman, Bram. Bram? How is he? Alive. Sends his regards. Master witches. Food and drink on the house. What can I get you? Show me what you got behind the counter. Okay, so... In general, if you want to play Gwent, I don't know if they fix this or patch it out, but I believe that some of these cards disappear if you don't get them all early on. And like I said, we'll start off next episode probably with um, some of these Gwent cards. How much is Decoy? I really... I think you get more Decoys. This is pretty cheap, though. It's like 20 Okay, so I'm going to spend all my gold buying the cards. Because I think I can work around the other stuff. Like, I don't need a ton of equipment early on. Um, and some of this stuff through events in the game might become inaccessible later on. Not necessarily any spoilers or anything, but... Um, Pretty busy place you got. Nation's on the move. Some search for kin. Others just want to get out of the way of the armies. They all need food, drink, and a night's rest and warmth. 
So, war's been good for your trade? Aye, so far. But it'd be best to know peace again. Times like these, you never know what tomorrow will bring. There a contract on that griffin? Nay, not at the moment. Used to be. Soon as a beast had built a nest nearby, the alderman would start a collection, or go to the lord for help. Now the alderman don't use the privy without asking the black one's permission first. Black ones are the Nilf guardians. And seems they hanged the lord. So no contract. Shame. We might have done something, but not for free. Um, so they take these monster contracts. You'll see when we get the quest for that's one of your big sources of income, especially early on in the game. Are these monster contracts? And that's why, that, that's most of their interactions with humans, or they come down and they just, that's the only way they can get money. You know, no one's going to hire them for a normal job, they don't trust them, they're kind of outcasts on society. They just show up, ask villages if, you know, they need some monsters taken care of or whatever, and they go kill a lot of monsters. Sometimes they can be hired out as assassins to go kill people, but most of the time they stick with monsters. I don't remember their exact sort of code, but that is generally frowned upon to take out assassination contracts on humans. Looking for a woman. Unless there's something that's haired, violet eyes, very clearly evil white, or bad about them. Writing in from Willoughby. It can get and, gray uh, like everything in the game. Strange as it sounds. Mostly Lilac and gooseberries. Might have smelled that. I've not seen nor smelt such a lady. I believe I'd remember. Yeah, especially hard to forget this one. Plenty of travelers about, though. Folk from all over. Might be worth your while to ask after her. Thanks for everything. you bandage that up? Please. I'm not decrepit yet. Then I'll ask about Yennefer. Mm-hmm. Just remember, we'd rather not draw any attention. Black one's been out measuring the fields. Let him measure. Better that than burning the harvest. You don't heal naturally on um, Death March. You can get potions, and we'll go over that later. Um, so you can heal up some, but... I'm looking for someone. And we seek some peace and quiet. Out of my face, freak. For your breath sours my beer. So, on some weaker minded um, humans, then you can do um, that's the Axie sign, I believe. So, you can use that, and usually it will make them talk. You can upgrade this with your skills. We'll talk about skills in the next episode, probably. Woman I mean, you do get a little bit of experience if you're successful with it. Talk. Folks say the lady rode through the village a few days back. Galloping so fast she knocked Radabor into a ditch. Which way did she go? Dunno. Lots of tracks leading off the main road. We could have gone anywhere. Oi, people! The freak's taken Micah's mind! Uh huh. And I'll take your tongue if you don't shut up. Looking for a woman. Uh, like everyone. Not like everyone. And not just any woman. Mine smells of lilac and gooseberries, dresses in black and white. Two schnapsies. <laughs> It'll lift your spirits. Fine, I'll have a drink. Can we cut to the chase? You seen her or not? Yennefer of Wengerberg. Never mentioned her name. Yet you described her perfectly. And once I hear something, I never forget. Come help it. How do you know Yennefer? 
Jennifer. What a question. Master Dandelion's ballads, of course. The only way a humble merchant might hope to rub up against greatness. Unless, that is, he's as lucky as I am. That was the merchant, that, or the, um... And runs the... into a very patient witcher. It's a Geralt of Rivia himself. The Butcher of Blaviken. What do you do? Who are you? A mangy vagrant. Gone to Rodim, at your service. Vagrant? That a profession now? Uh, once a merchant of mirrors. The madding crowd dubbed me Master Mirror, or the Man of Glass. Recognize me from Master Dandelion's ballads, too? To your health. So Dandelion was the narrator when whenever you save a game and start again, he'll sort of narrate what just happened to like when I accidentally clicked on the load at the beginning of this episode. Um, and you run into him. He is a character. He is part of the plot line. But yeah, he's kind of a bard that follows you around and is really telling the tale of everything that happens to you and all of the decisions that you make. So I'll show you something that has to do with that here in just a second after we get this dialogue line. You've seen Yennefer? Deepest apologies, but I must ask, is this about love? Guessed it. It's love. I knew it at once. What do you know? Tell me. Before you appeared, it never occurred to me that might have been Yennefer. Who would have thought? Get to the point. An elf guardian scout from the local garrison saw her. Where? At their camp. She rode in there. Dark of night. Black and white. Gooseberries and... Yes, I know. Had a terse exchange with the garrison commander and raced off. Where to? <laughs> I'm not omniscient. Ask at the garrison. Thanks. We men of the road must stick together. Perhaps one day I'll be in trouble and you'll be nearby to help. Okay, so um, let me show you the menu here real quick since we didn't do that before. So you can go to these quests. So you have the main quest line here, and you know it just kind of tells you what to do. And then you've got secondary quests over there, and you've got your completed quest down here. And then you will get like monster contracts and stuff like that. And you can kind of pick which ones you want to go follow, and it gives you the next steps and has quest tracking and all that kind of stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, Character screen, so this is where as you level up you can put different points in these things and I'll show you when we actually get a level. The leveling process is fairly slow, which is cool. It takes a while to level up. Um, then the red tree is kind of your combat skills. Generally what you want is either the heavier striking skills, the slower skills, which do more armor piercing damage um, and benefit from having heavier armor if you take one of the skills in another tree over here, which we'll talk about here in a second. But basically slower swing, ignores armor, does more damage um, per swing. Then you have your faster hits, which are easier to land. Um, they have a much higher chance of critical striking. There's stuff that um, a lot of lighter armor increase critical strikes on fast attack. So faster, weaker against armor, but easier to get off and just really quick exchanges allows for more mobility um, and such. And then the other ones are just kind of like probably don't want to put too many points in those. I mean, you can get both the fast and the strong ones if you want to work your way lower. But it's like most, you know, RPG type of skill trees. You have to have so many points here. You have to have eight points here before you can unlock any here. Then you have to have 20 total in all of these before you unlock them down here. And most of these, you can get five points in them. There's a couple that are a little bit less, um, I think, or they all, they might all literally be five. Okay, yeah, they're all literally five. <laughs> Um, and then this is kind of your magic tree. If you want to increase your signs, you can get extra power with them. So like with Igni, it increases the intensity. So that's how much damage it does by 5%. Um, so you can hold down the button and emit a continuous stream of fire around people. Um, with this one, targeted enemy becomes an ally and deals 20% more damage. So if you mind control them, not only do they go to sleep, but they do more damage. Um, Delusion increases the Axie's effectiveness in dialogue. 
So some of the more powerful, or like as you level up, some of the people with stronger minds, you won't be able to have those Axie dialogue choices, like the preferential dialogue choices that you can do if you mind control them temporarily, unless you have these points. But it doesn't, it just kind of makes your life simpler if you do that. There are no major plot points that are gated behind putting points into delusion. So if you don't want to do that, you're not missing out on anything important. You just might have to do a little bit of extra fighting or pay a little bit of extra gold for something. It's not a big deal. Um, but this tree, I mean, you really need to devote an entire build to this, and there are some builds, and I think it, they're a lot better against killing huge swarms of monsters if you just want to have some fun um, later on. But I, I think this build is not as strong against bosses um, <coughs> and other really strong big foes, I think. I might be wrong about that, but I don't. I think this is kind of the for fun sort of build if you want to do that. Then the alchemy build, this is largely considered kind of the most OP tree later on in the game. Um, you can drink these things called decoctions, which are like give you huge benefits um, for a long period of time in combat. And usually I think you can only have one or maybe two of them, but I believe you can get up to three of them if you take different things like acquired tolerance, which allows you every one formula that you know allows you to have increased toxicity. Every time you drink a potion or a decoction, then you get extra your poison for a certain amount of time and it doesn't matter that's part of witcher's thing they can drink a lot of those and gain powers but um if you go over a certain threshold you start taking damage so this is only good this is really one of the major things that makes this tree good is acquired tolerance and it's only good if you already know a lot of recipes so we don't have any yet that we've completed but you find dozens and dozens and dozens of these recipes as the game goes on i don't remember the exact number maybe it's like 50 or something um, and so if you get this early on, it's not that good because you don't know the main recipes. But if you're like level like 40 or something and um, if you're number 40 or something, then yeah, it's going to be or level 40 and you have 50 formulas. Yeah, it's really good. So this is much better later on into the game. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that later. You want to get mostly combat stuff. I guess you can get the sign stuff too, but mostly combat stuff. Um, if you want to be as effective as possible early on and then this is kind of a utility tree where there are some pretty good ones in here the most notable are there are three different kinds of armor you can specialize in so bear school techniques so this is if you wear heavy armor each piece of heavy armor increases your vitality so your health by five percent and your strong attack those slower attacks do five percent more damage you have medium armor which increases how much damage your magic does and then your stamina regeneration so basically like your mana to cast magic regenerates faster and then you have cat school techniques, which is each piece of light armor increases your critical hit damage by 5% and your fast attack, um, or by 25% and your fast attack damage by 5%. So this one's like the highest pure DPS that you can get is the cat school. This is kind of a mix of a little bit of extra damage, a little bit of tankiness, and this is kind of your magic armor. So we're probably going to go cat school. Um, I, I kind of like, I think it's a fun play style, and I think if you play well, then that is going to be probably your best bet against most bosses, at least early on in the game. Once you get to some really awesome heavier armor and you get really deep in the alchemy tree, I think that the heavy one might be better because some of your decoctions give you a lot of lifesteal and a lot of extra resistances, and that scales way better with heavier armor and more vitality. Heavier armor in general is going to give you more protection from getting hit by some of those you know, later game monsters versus if you get touched later on in cat school techniques you're probably going to die so we might switch over to heavy later on you can switch these points out but it costs a lot of gold i don't remember how much i got thousand gold or something which is a ton um but yeah getting one of those is good and then i believe getting um metabolic control maximum toxicity by 30 points is really good once you start going down the alchemy tree Okay, but that's pretty much it for those. You can meditate over time, which does refill your potions. Like you use a little bit of alcohol to refill your potions. So this is how you can get health back later on and just you know get your decoctions back and all that stuff. You just meditate for an hour. Sometimes there are certain quests that take place at night or that take place during the day. Um, and so you can meditate up until that time so you don't have to wait. Bestiary describes if you've seen the beast, it will tell you stuff about it and it'll tell you different vulnerabilities that it has. Um, the tutorial, just for learning stuff. Now, this is the one that I was talking about with Dandelion. Here he is. Um, but he actually writes these up. It's sort of written just like him. Um, 
or like in his style of speaking and you'll know once we run into him but what actually gets written down here is based on your interactions with certain people so there are some people that if you have a favorable interaction with them then he'll write something good about them if you have a negative interaction with them then he'll write something bad about them so it's kind of cool that he's the person writing down this whole story um, over time and he's collecting these tales and then your decisions influence how he's telling that story how he's telling that tale which is pretty fun um, so I mean that's how history is right if you see like what people think of certain political figures in history or certain kings or whatever it depends on whose side they're on right is it one of their close advisors is it an adversary is it someone from another culture it can all depend on the perspective and sort of the decisions that are made so anyways I think that's a really cool touch that it is kind of a subjective history of these characters um, but if you want a little bit of background about them um, and you just kind of want the end game background it'll tell you um so like right here, setting aside cumbersome false modesty, I can say that I know his story better than any man alive. I was with him through hard times, good and bad, helping his wise advice. So yeah, it's definitely subjective. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty fun. Um, you can collect different books, which can remind you of certain things. We don't have any right now. Some are just kind of collectible for fun books. If you want to try to get all the books in the game, you can do that. Um, that are lootable. Crafting, you can collect certain elements and then you know build different armors out of that with an armor smith um alchemy so these are where you can build certain oils potions substances um and really just kind of amplify and buff up different aspects of your um of your gameplay more about that later on and then of course you have kind of your standard inventory you equip different swords and armor and stuff like that to power you up and then you can kind of see your vitality your toxicity and i don't remember a button but you can see um oh player stats is just c so you can see your armor, your DPS, and stuff like that over time. Okay, that's going to be it for this episode. I do want to keep these under an hour, usually about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, there is a Gwent person right here, so we will talk with this, and we'll get a card game in. I'll show you how Gwent works, and we'll learn a little bit more about the opening of the game. We'll go through, we'll start doing some quests, and I hope you stay with us. So thank you very much, um, and special thanks again to Black Falcon and Sammy for sponsoring this cam this campaign, this playthrough. I really appreciate it. If you'd like for me to do a playthrough um, yourself, just email me. Let me know the game that you're interested in um, or the type of content that you want. We can talk about it. Um, and, yeah, that'll be it. See you next time. Have a good day. Don't forget to like and subscribe.